Hey folks, John Thompson, Spring Framer Guru. So in this module, we want to take a look at using Spring Boot's profile properties. We saw the application.properties file being used, but we can also set those up for profile. Spring Boot has a really cool feature where we can say application-profilename.properties and have those get wired in. And that this is a, a feature of Spring Boot specifically to wire in properties like this, because Spring Boot, through its configuration, is gonna look for a dash profile value. So application-default.properties or application-dev.properties. And those properties files are gonna be used for the, the profile that's active. And it's a, a pretty cool feature of Spring Boot. So let's take a look at setting that up now inside of IntelliJ. I'll show you how to set this up for the default profile. Okay, inside IntelliJ, you can see that I've added in the application-default properties. And inside that, that file, I've given a, a property. You can see on line one there, guru.springframework.profile.message. And I'm saying this is a default profile. And it's, it's just a message string that we want to include. Now, up here, in the default system out, I'm adding in, just like we did before in our, our test, to use the value and then in the system out, I'm going to display that message. So let's run that now. And we can see that we didn't get our message. Let's scroll back up here and you can see that the message is not set. Now this isn't a problem in my configuration because the configuration did work. What's happening here is this is how the the spring bean life cycle works so spring went out and created that bean through the constructor and the message was there but it's a no r constructor so spring's going to come back and, and add that message to it so i need to change how i did this so let me show you that right now so instead of that i'm going to make this an auto wired constructor and what we want to do let's grab this and grab that also Get rid of the semicolon. Clean that up a little bit. Now I have an auto wire constructor. It takes in a string value, and I'm saying to use the value from that that property. Now let's run this again. You can see Spring Boot starting up here, and this time I got the message. Let's go back up here so we can see the message. So that, that's an important distinction there. So we can see that that message did get wired and it's from the default properties. And one thing I didn't show you from the last module is I did comment out the, the dev profile. So we are using the default profile. So right now there's no active profile being set. And because we have application dash default, we're gonna get that drawn in. So we can see that message is getting wired into the bean at runtime and the proper profile is being picked up. Okay, like I said at the beginning of this video, the, the Spring profiles are, are pretty powerful, especially the way Spring Boot does the application dash profile name dot properties file. So that is a, a real handy tool. So whenever we have an active profile, Spring Boot is going to be looking for application dash profile name dot properties. And here I showed you how to wire up the default one. And you saw me make a mistake there. I found that mistake while I was setting up the, this uh, course. And I made that mistake and I decided to leave it in so you could see how spring beans are actually wired up. And just to reiterate what was happening there is we didn't see that message initially because the constructor was getting called. So spring was going in, building the bean and spring beans do have a life cycle that they go through. So Spring is going to create the beans, and then it's going to come back and set the properties. And what happened there, it was coming back and setting the properties, but we saw the messages being output to the council upon the constructor getting called. So that property has been set, so that's why we saw null printed out to the council. And then we recreated it to auto-wire in that value. So that pushes it through a slightly different life cycle within Spring, so Spring has to bring up that value and then inject that value into the bean. So that's why we saw the message after we did that.